Angelica Mandela, uh, the first of the first of the first. First grandchild of Nelson Mandela from his first wife, from his first son. I'm the founder and the chairperson of the Timbe Gile Mandela Foundation. I was born in Cape Town, but from the age of two, I stayed with my grandmother. Then at seven years old, 1972, which was three years after my father died, my grandmother lock, packed us lock, stock and barrel to the Eastern Cape. Dilega is a free-spirited gender activist. I'm an author, having just penned my own book, I am Dilega more than my surname. I rub people the wrong way half the time because I speak my mind. I was doing teaching at Lakbar, but I hated teaching. I hated the school. After I fell pregnant, I told, I told them that there is no way in hell I'm going to go back there. So Tembela's my paternal grandmother was a nurse, a, a, a matron at a local clinic. So she said, look, you know, at least you'll earn an income, you'll be able to support your son. And that's how I started nursing and I fell in love with it. We trained in a different way that the nurses of today train. So we spent a lot of time doing the nursing, not learning theory. So we're not theory nurses. We were, we were nurses that would go through the ropes and we had, I mean, we had good teachers, honestly. Our, our nursing teachers were excellent. It is a foundation that is carrying on the legacy of my grandfather. You know, um, the tagline for the Tembegile Foundation is continuing the legacy to keep the, the memory of my father alive because he died when I was 24. And if you read with any books that has been written, it's like he was born, he died, boom. And yet his legacy continues through my sister and I. We have three pillars in the foundation. One, being health. In the health one, we have a program called Pride of the Rural Girl, where we look at rural girls that don't attend school when they menstruate because of a lack of sanitary work, where we, you know, we um, raise funds to supply them with sanitary way, working over their five-year cycle, five cycle, but also to have like camps where we equip both boys and girls, you know, in terms of how do they confront this adolescent stage? We can't run away from the fact that boy ch children have got to learn from men how to be men. And there's a great need to go back to the drawing board and say, we need good, strong role models of men that will be able to, to, to level the playing fields because we can't keep on elevating girl learners only. And on the education side, we want to build centers of excellence mainly in the rural areas, where we have state-of-the-art science laboratory, computer lab, library, and sports facilities. It's a, it's a humbling and sobering uh, thought that the little that you do, that there are people that are noticing it. AIDS is something that I relate personally to because my uncle died in 2005 and he was HIV positive. That's why I had to partake in the, in the Global Fund initiative last year of, of eradicating, you know, 20, a, a thing by 2030, you mm. know, AIDS, TB and malaria. I wrote for two major reasons. It's because people don't know who I am. They always, because mainly they know Mamuni's children and I come from the first family. And I've always felt that my grandmother's story has never been told. The person that raised me. And I felt <clears throat> it important that I talk about who this woman was. The other one was to talk about my father. Because in the lifespan of Madiba, he is the son he lost in a car accident, tragic car accident in 1969. Yes, it mentioned he had children and that's it. Some of it. But this is a man who lived, who married, who had children. Who was he? In my book, I talk about being raped. I talk about, you know, 
gender violence, talk about my foundation, I talk about being a mother, you know, and, and the, the struggles I had. I had to talk about suicide because my mother committed suicide. So I had to, to, to tell the story to anybody that would listen. The advice I would give to young women is to say, find your voice and be authentic to it. In a world today that we live in where you have to conform to popular culture, to what the girl next door is doing, it is very difficult to be authentic to your voice.